And greetings, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of the Drive Face Podcast. Of course, we have another great show lineup for you, and we hope that you will be enjoying it. Uh, today, in the play of the day, I have with me Commonwealth Games and World Athletics silver medalist uh, Shanika Ricketts. Now, Shanika has been creating waves, and we suspect that she will be going to Tokyo 2021 and beyond, but she'll tell us more about that. Uh, Shanika, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, All right, listen, let me um, just start. No, go ahead. Let me just start by asking you, Shanika, why, why triple jump and not long jump? Why triple jump and not long <laughs> jump? <laughs> um, the long jump is too easy. Um, <laughs> I think I enjoy the technical um, difficulty of triple jump. Um, mm-hmm. I've done the long jump in high school and I'm not really a fan of the long jump as I am of the triple jump because it just goes by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but doesn't the triple jump go by very fast too? No. I have three different phases to carry out along with the, the run up, So it's, it's very different from the long jump. Which is more technical, isn't it, um, Shanika? And, uh, you know, how do you manage to work on the different phases of, of the triple jump? Um, as you said, it's a very technical event. Um, so there are, there are a lot of different phases that um, constitute mm-hmm. the triple jump. Um, so we have to work on the run-up, which is the, the sprint to the board. And then um, we have to carry out a hop a step and a jump. So in order to train for the triple jump, we have to break it down in different phases. So we have sprint training for the the first part of the the jump. And then we also have to do strength training in order to carry out the the remaining parts of the the triple jump. And obviously I know little about triple jump, but there's so much strength work that has to go on um, background season and even during the season, just to ensure that your body can manage all of that um, impact on the, the different joints. Yes, definitely. Um, I feel like every single year, it's a whole brand new experience. Um, I was just um, talking to one of my teammates the other day and we were talking about how difficult it is to go through the training session, especially during background, because that's when we have to make sure that um, we're training hard, we're lifting heavy. Um, to prepare for when the season comes on. So um, it's very difficult. Um, It takes a lot of um, strength training. It takes a lot of um, agility, flexibility um, training and stuff like that. So it's a very difficult um, discipline to master. Yeah. And and I was, I think I was saying it to you some time ago that the, the successes are minuscule, meaning that you're not going to be improving you know, very far quickly. It's small improvements here and there. So it takes a lot of discipline and dedication to the, to the event. Yes, definitely. Um, sometimes it takes years to um, improve your personal best from just a few <laughs> centimeters. And um, I think it's one of the, those events that you have to really focus on. You have to, it takes a lot of mental Um, strength as well because sometimes you feel like you should be doing a certain distance and it does not mean that as soon as you go to compete you will achieve that distance so you have to keep focused you have to keep working hard and to just um, wait and see everything come to fruition yeah um, so take us back a bit to let's start at Veer Technical and uh, deciding to keep working on the jumps, what, what made you go to Veritech and, and then your decision to go to college overseas? Um, what made me choose Veritech Technical High School? Um, I went to St. Benedict's Primary School. Um, that's one of the powerhouses of track and field at um, Primary Champs. Mm-hmm. I remember um, some of my teammates went to Vera Technical High School. So that was like the place to be, like the fastest girl in school went to Vera Technical High School. And obviously we would look up to that person. So that's one of the reasons why I thought 
if she's at Bell Technical High School and she's doing well, then that's where I need to be. So that's how I ended up going to Bell Technical High School. Um, I had to convince my parents to send me there because um, I did GSAT pass for Alpha Academy. <laughs> Actually went down there for the orientation and then I, I wasn't feeling the vibe at Alpha to be honest. So I just asked uh, my mother to give me the chance to go to Bell Technical High School. And that's how I ended up there. Um, after that, I went to San Diego State University. I remember I was approached by the head coach and the assistant coach from San Diego State University um, while I was at Penn Relays. And basically they, they told me how they would like to work with me at the collegiate level. And I was convinced by the offers that they were given. So that's how I, I ended up moving from Bear Technical High School to San Diego State University. And then from San Diego um, to the UE training base, there, there are very few jumpers or field events persons who return to Jamaica to train. Um, it's, it's not the easiest decision, I'm, I'm sure, for everybody. I'm sure there are other motivations. But talk us through what made you decide to, to return and, uh, you know, how has that been going for you? Um, to be honest, during my final year in college, um, as most college um, athletes would can tell you as well, it's not very easy to make a decision as to where to go afterwards because mm. you're, you're thinking about whether, whether or not you should stay with your current coach or whether or not you should um, look to see um, other alternatives. Um, I made the decision to move back home um, after college because I just thought it might be one of the best things to do at the time. Um, I was not working. I did not have a shoe contract or anything like that. So financially, I feel like that would be a, a better decision to make as well. Um, so I made the decision to move back home and to work with my now husband, Kerry Lee Ricketts. And we've been working together since that time, since 2014 until now. Um, I've been based at the University of the West Indies um, campus, and it has been nothing short of an amazing journey. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. You know, what, what people may want to know from you, Shanika, is uh, how do you stay motivated in those times? Well, leading me to know, because at that time, if I remember well, you would have been the only you know, triple jump off of any repute that would have been uh, training with us. Your, your journey and your aim was really to be at the highest level. So how did you stay motivated? And the second part of that is that in Jamaica, when we have track meets, there aren't a lot of triple jumpers there to give you competition anyway. So how do you stay motivated is a, is a simple question to that. Um, how do I stay motivated? I'm usually... Um, internally motivated so I know exactly what I want so it doesn't matter like what's happening around me or if the conditions are ideal or anything like that I just feel like once I have um, a goal in mind I do everything in my power to make sure that I can see that truth and uh, sometimes it's difficult when we go to track meets for instance and I'm the only jumper or there is two of us um, sometimes we have to compete with the guys just to make up numbers and it's very difficult but I, I feel like those challenges are what push me to continue to work hard and to you know make sure that I'm doing everything that I that I intend to do. Mm. Uh, in 20, 2019 I'm going to fast forward a bit Shanika to 2019 would have been one of your better years um, in the sport and in the event uh, talk to us about that feeling. Um, I remember you doing well at Commonwealth Games 2018, going into 2019 World Championships uh, on the Di on the Diamond League circuit. I, I saw you uh, jumping in the streets of Monaco. Uh, talk to us about those kind of experience and 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 what it is that you've been using to improve year by year. Uh, 2019 was one of those fairy tale seasons, to be honest. 
um, I remember in February on my birthday, I jumped 14.76 meters, um, which was at the time a world lead. Um, I didn't expect to jump that big that early in the season. And as the year progressed, I kept um, improving. I went to the Pan Am Games and jumped another personal best, um, which set everything up quite nicely for the Diamond League final and then World Championships, um, ultimately. Um, so I feel like 2019 was one of those years where, where I was a big student of the sport, I'll put it that way. Um, I was learning a lot of things. I was also putting myself in a position to unlearn some of the things that I thought were, were best at that time. And I feel like it was the it was a combination of so many things that led to um, us being so successful um, that year. Mm. Um, yeah, that 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 year was was a really good one for you. Uh, and, and I suspect though that you 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 should have been seeing it coming in. You know, certainly 2018 wasn't a bad one for you. That was calm games down in Gold Coast, Australia. But as you said, jumping that far so early in 2019 kind of set um, set up everything for you for for that year. Yes, definitely. Since 2018. Um, I remember I jumped 14.52, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, to get sil to get the silver medal at the Commonwealth Games. And the year before, I was not jumping anywhere close to that. So I knew that I was getting better. And um, it was just a matter of time before I started to see even bigger, bigger jumps coming forth. G g give us my, my producer is listening somewhere she she really don't know much about this event but give us on a, 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 a particular day what are some of the things that you do in training Shanika because people think you just you know you just get out there and you just jump in the pit and that's it but for training you know on a typical workout day you know give us the life of Shanika one day from from getting up in the morning until the evening <laughs> um so yeah, so I would wake up in the morning, um, grab some breakfast. Um, I like eggs, so I'm usually making like eggs and bread or, or porridge. I'm a porridge person, stuff like that. And then um, do my, my normal like stretches and our core work before going to training. And then a training now would go to a series of warm ups. Um, to prepare the muscles for whatever it is that you're doing. So some days um, I would do plyometrics um, or gym work or sprint work. So sometimes we train as sprinters. Um, sometimes we have to lift heavy like chores and mm. stuff like that. And then other days it's flexibility. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we do every day. Amazing. Um, so I, I know Kerry Lee Ricketts I, um, because we had worked at the University of the West Indies. What is it like be, be your coach being your, your husband being your coach? Is, is it like difficult or is it like, yo, we know each other and we under, he understands what, what makes me tick in terms of just performance and, and stuff like those? I feel like I get this question. Uh, all the time. <laughs> you will. Uh, yes, but um, and I feel like the same answer goes all the time. It, it's it never gets easy. Um, mm. it's not difficult either because we know each other on a personal level. Um, we have to make sure that at training we try our best to be professionals. Um, and try not to be. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's. It's difficult sometimes because, um, so for instance, you you find it difficult to separate the husband from the coach and you might want to say something to your husband in training, but you can't because he's not a husband at that time, he's the coach at right. that time. Um, so it's been a challenge for us some days and it's, it's easier some days than other days. So, so you don't tell him like if you show too hard at you, you say yo if you ever shout again when you reach home you not talk to him you know and give yes, some of those... I've done that 
honest. <laughs> That has happened to us before, um, to be quite <laughs> honest, but um, that's why I tell you, it's not, it's not easy, and it doesn't get any easier, right. especially on the hard days. Mm. <laughs> but but it but it has been working and and I suspect there is something there that um he seemed to keep getting bet more and more out of you. Yes, we definitely have a good relationship, um, coach athlete relationship, and as you have seen, we've been getting results over the years. Um, so it definitely works. Feel I should ask that added pressure to ensure you do well so that Jamaicans can pay more attention to, to your event? Um, I sometimes really do feel the pressure, but at the same time, we have to be careful not to um, put on too much stress on ourselves because that can lead to um, a, a reduction in, in, in the quality of our performances as well. Um, I feel like it's our responsibility somewhat to make sure that we maintain a performance that is in such a way that is inspiring to the next generation so they can see us and know that Jamaica is not only producing talents in the 100 meters or the, the sprinting events, we also have great athletes um, in the triple jump, in the shot put, um, in the discus. Um, so we're doing well in other events, in field events at the world stage. So young athletes don't just see themselves, don't just feel like they have to do well in the, they have to do the 100 meters or the 200. They can also venture into other events because we're doing well in all of them. Yeah, I mean, that's that's amazing. We were talking about 2019 and how great that was for you, um, Shanika. And then 2020, you would have been preparing for Tokyo 2020 when the entire country, well, the world stopped because of COVID-19. You know, help us to understand how challenging that has been for you and how you've tried to stay motivated despite everything that is happening. Um, to be honest, um, coming out of Doha, I actually picked up an injury, a knee injury um, during background season. So um, when the pandemic came, it was actually... It actually worked in my favor because I honestly would not have been ready for the Olympic Games. Um, I had to use all that time to rehab uh, the knee injury and to get myself back on track. So um, I feel like it was a blessing in disguise um, because honestly, I would not be ready for the, the Games in Tokyo um, last year. So I'm just using this um, pandemic to get myself back on track. Um, training has been going great so far. Um, no injury, no niggles, no anything like that. Um, we've all had to readjust to the new normal. Um, right now we are competing. I have a track meet on Saturday. Um, it's different. We have to wear a mask. We have to social distance. We have to do all of that. But I think we just have to make the most of the opportunities that we still have. Um, the country is not on the full lockdown and we still have the opportunity to train. We still have the opportunity to compete. So we just have to make use of that and um, just get ready for the Tokyo Games. What, what are some of the things you're trying to work on now um, leading up to Tokyo 2020? Because uh, I was saying that there are some uh, younger athletes who are coming up trying to take your space. And then there are some of the older, more mature ones who are trying to make a comeback. Um, some of the things I just have to keep the things that are actually working. Um, there's always room to improve. So I'm definitely working on getting stronger, getting faster, um, holding the phases more um, in the jumps and stuff like that. And um, I'm just really looking forward to being in shape and staying Staying injury free because that's one of the biggest things because sometimes you can be in the best shape or you can be having the best season of your life and then here comes the injury. So I just hope that I can remain injury free throughout this season and to just continue to improve um, and to get consistent jumps going up into the championship, mm. into the Olympic Games. Uh, Olympic Games and, and certainly I'm sure you're looking forward to next year 
World Champion World Athletic um, Championships and probably Commonwealth Games. Who knows? Yes, definitely. All of those are on the table. Uh, the 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 other question that I thought I would get from you. So I know we are now having a Ricketts Performance Center. Um, quite a number of youngsters are that Kerry is re- is recruiting into that. How has that been going and how does it feel now to have some youngsters around you who you can motivate and give some inspiring words? Yes. Um, so the Ricketts Performance Center um, has not yet been launched, but it is a registered um, company. And we have been, we have been, no, the group was formed um, sometime last year um, just during the same time that the, the pandemic came along. Um, so um, we definitely have one main goal, which is to produce athletes who are trying to make, make it to the Olympic Games. Um, everyone there is motivated. Everyone there is trying their best to represent their country um, and to improve as athletes. Um, so. I feel like having them as training partners, we're all there on the same mission. We have the same goal, and um, it's just a, a very good working environment. Shanika, tell me about some of the, what advice do you have for youngsters um, who may want to do long jump, triple, triple jump, field events? You know, what, what are some of the advice that you would have for them um, who want to get into this event and want to get into track and field? Um, some advice I would give um, to athletes who want to do the event is um, to go for it. Um, be yourself. Don't change um, for any. Don't change um, for acceptance or compare yourself to anybody else. Um, everybody is different. Um, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And um, we will face challenges because challenges are a part of our daily lives. Um, so we just have to learn to push past them and um, go the extra mile to achieve your goals. Trust the process, um, be patient with yourself, um, and don't expect things to always work out that the exact way that you envision them to go because life is not a, bl- a blueprint. You will have detours. Um, celebrate small victories. Don't just wait until you achieve the goal that you set out. Celebrate um, an improvement in training, stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, you just have to learn to appreciate things as appreciate things as they come, and not just wait until things work out exactly how you want for it to be. Mm. What well, what how do you want to be remembered, Shanika? When you when you give up the, the triple jump spikes, you know, how do you want Jamaicans or just the world to remember you? Um, I just want to be remembered as one of the best triple jumpers in the world, um, someone who gave it their all and hopefully I can impact some lives on the on the way as well. And, and and what's next for you? No, I don't suppose I'm not telling you that you're retiring this year or anything like that, but I'm sure it's at some point it is something you look at, you know, after track and field, what do you think is next for, for Shanika? Or what are some of the things you're working on now? Um, I, I have a couple of things in mind that I would be interested in. Um, I don't have one per se right now. Um, I think... I enjoy sports journalism. I also like um, sports management, um, sports agent, stuff like that. So um, I'm not limiting myself just now because I feel like I still have a good while to go um, before retirement. But those are some of the things that I would be interested in. I, I hear the sport agent part is a headache one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yes. but so, so I've heard. <laughs> But but those are some good ones. My producer is is in journalism. Probably you should talk to her. Um, not yes. she's in journalism, but that, <laughs> that will, that's I what she did at that. at Carrimac. Um, and she graduated, so she can't be that bad, you know. So <laughs> I'll 
I'll put you through to her and you can talk with her. I'm sure she can give you some oh, good please. advice. Um, you know, certainly so as when you're when you're ready for that. Is, is the national record one of those that you're looking to smash? Definitely. Um, I've, I've had my eyes set on that for quite some time now. And I feel like a scratch record keeps saying, oh, I'm, I'm hoping to jump over 15 meters, 15 meters, 15 meters. So this year I'm just trying my best to switch the focus from just a number per se and to just try my hardest to get the national record and um, to just see how far I can actually jump. Yeah. Have you, have, have you ever like do that one jump and when you cut the sun, you're like, this is it. And then you hear, you see like a red flag or, or hear them call some numbers that you're like, huh? That, that ever happened to you? <laughs> heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I remember in Doha on the final jump, um, I think I was supposed to bring the marker forward by a half, half a shoe. And I did that and I actually fouled by a pinch, like a nail. And then when I saw the replay, like it looked like a 15 meters jump and it just taunted me the whole time because you can't go back and redo it. Right. It's just gone. But yeah. um, I feel like when you see jumps like that, it's just motivation to say, well, okay, I did not get it here, but obviously it's there. It's just a matter of getting it on the board and getting the jump measured. So I just use those type of um, situations as motivation going into the next competition and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think it kind of show you that you just with slight adjustments, exactly. um, you can you can from very far. Adjustments that makes the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I feel it for you guys, um, jumpers, throwers, because anything can cause um, a full jump. Etc. It could be just the wind. It could be just that you make a, a, a quick step trying to breeze through the wind. It could be just any, or the wind in your back can push you. Anything. Like, just, and then sometimes, like the wind fluctuates throughout the competition. So, like this time you're running down the runway and it's 1.9, the next one it's 1.2, and then that can show up your, your marker by. A, a small bit and then you end up falling a, a potential good jump so it, it's very complicated <laughs> <laughs> it is it is let me tell you i wouldn't do it i would not do it at the highest level so i have a lot of respect for you and all the people who you know continue to work on 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 jumps on throws because it based on what i look on and when yeah. I talk to people like Kerry Lee, Ricketts, um, Julian <laughs> Robinson, etc., it just looked like hard work, you know, um, that I can't manage. <laughs> so I've begun up and I've, I've, I've obviously, I've, I've traveled already with you or watch you compete. So I kind of know the hard work that you put in the sport. And I've said it to you before that uh, I know you're going to match that national record. And I, I just don't know why I think it is going to be very, very soon. I think, I think. And what you say is, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it is there for the taking for you may i ask though um keep how is the competition the rivalry between you and and, and kimmy um how, how do you use that to push you forward or you just know that it's there and you guys just compete um, honestly i don't really see much as of like a rivalry because We've been competing together since very tech days. Right. Um, and then we made the transition to college. I competed with her at the NCAAs, I think, one time. And then um, from NCs to the, the um, international level. So I don't really see much as a, like a rivalry because we both represent in Jamaica and everything that we do. Um, represents Jamaica as well. So we, we see it more like teaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, w let me ask you this, and I, I probably know the answer, but what would you want to see uh, more? What kind of resources or what kind of things would you want to see from the authorities in Jamaica, you know, um, towards your sport? I feel like um, one of the things that the J-Trees and the 
Jama Jamaica Olympic Association could do is to um, invest more in the athletes. A lot of times um, we have we have the talent, but most of them are not from a wealthy background or they may not have the, the financial resources to pay for certain things, to pay for coaching, to pay for physiotherapy um, and all the nest and chiropractor and stuff like that, that they are, that's necessary in order to get to the next level. So I feel like um, greater investments could be made in the athletes as well as some of the coaches um, to ensure that they can make it to the next level. Mm. What, what are, finally, what are the targets for Shanika for 2021? What are some of the targets you, you sat down with Coach Curly Ricketts and you're like, okay, these are what we want to meet for, for the 2021 season? Yeah, so for the 2021 season, um, Coach Ricketts, Curly Ricketts and I, um, we're basically targeting being on the podium again because we were, we were on the podium in Doha and anything less than that would be a step down. So we definitely hope to go on the podium. Um, the national record is also in sight. And to just be consistently jumping over 15 meters. So those are some of the targets that we have for 2021. Amazing. Listen, Shanika, um, personally, just wishing you all the best for this season. Uh, I think most people know that you are an amazing talent and great personality also. Um, so we Thank always, you. always want you to do well. Uh, and you, you did go to Veer Tech, which is close to where I live uh, in Clarendon. So that, that makes it also special. And Thank you were at so UWE. So all the best, <laughs> Shanika. And Thank the hail you. of Coach Kerry Lee Ricketts so for me. Will uh, do. Thank you so much for having me. Great having you. That's Kerry, Shanika. I almost said that's Kerry Lee Ricketts. That's Shanika Ricketts. Uh, her goal this year, get back on the podium. And we think that she can. So on behalf of the entire production team, uh, Rashika Grant, producer, Marsha Boyce, and everyone who helps with the Dry Face podcast, this has been another episode of the Dry Face podcast. <laughs>